Words of Sri Aurobindo Sadhana in the ashram and outside. The best way to prepare oneself for this spiritual life when one has to live in the ordinary occupations and surroundings is to cultivate an entire equality and detachment and the samatha of the Gita with the faith that the Divine is there and the Divine will at work in all things even though at present under the conditions of a world of ignorance. Beyond this are the light and ananda towards which life is working, but the best way for their advent and foundation in the individual being and nature is to grow in this spiritual equality. That would also solve your difficulty about things unpleasant and disagreeable. All unpleasantness should be faced with this spirit of samatha. When one is living in the world, one cannot do as in an ashram. One has to mix with others and keep up outwardly at least ordinary relations with others. The important thing is to keep the inner consciousness open to the divine and grow in it. As one does that, more or less rapidly according to the inner intensity of the sadhana, the attitude towards others will change. All will be seen more and more in the divine and the feelings, actions, etc. will more and more be determined not only by the old external reactions but by the growing consciousness within you. The difficulty which you experience from relatives and others is always one that intervenes as an obstacle when one has to practice the sadhana in ordinary or unfavorable surroundings. The only way to escape from it is to be able to live in oneself, in one's inner being, which becomes possible when the responsiveness and luminosity of which you speak in your letter increase and become normal. For then you are constantly aware of your inner being and even live in it. The outer becomes an instrument, a means of communication and action in the outer world. It is then possible to make the relations with people outside free from tie or necessary reaction. One can determine from within one's own reaction or absence of reactions. There is a fundamental liberation from the external nexuses, of course, if one wills it to be so. Peace is never easy to get in the life of the world and never constant. Unless one lives deep within and bears the external activities as only a surface front of being. The life of samsara is in its nature a field of unrest. To go through it in the right way, one has to offer one's life and actions to the divine and pray for the peace of the divine within. When the mind becomes quiet, one can feel the Divine Mother supporting the life and put everything into her hands. It is necessary or rather inevitable that in an ashram, which is a laboratory as X puts it for a spiritual and supramental yoga, Humanity should be variously represented. For the problem of transformation has to deal with all sorts of elements, favorable and unfavorable. 
This same man indeed carries in him a mixture of these two things. If only sattvic and cultured men come for yoga, men without very much of the vital difficulty in them, then because the difficulty of the vital element in terrestrial nature has not been faced and overcome, it might well be that the endeavor would fail. There might conceivably be, under certain circumstances, an over-mental layer superimposed on the mental, vital and physical and influencing them, but hardly anything supramental or a sovereign transmutation of the human being. Those in the ashram come from all quarters and of all kinds. It cannot be otherwise.